Can a fake $35 Surefire compare to a real Surefire? You might be surprised with how well this does. You all really like the budget or fake night vision versus the real night vision video. So I decided I'm going to do the same thing with some other products. So the next one I decided to do was a Surefire light. So this here is a fake light and this on the bottom is the real light. And it's really honestly pretty impressively hard to tell the difference between the two when you look at them side by side. Uh, this one here is $34 on Amazon. Uh, and I bought it thinking that it was gonna be absolute garbage. And I gotta say, I was a little bit surprised. So at first we're going to line these up side by side. We're gonna break them down and really compare them next to each other to see what is similar and where they differ. And then after that, we're gonna go out to the range and we're gonna do a handful of tests to really see the durability of this and see if this is even a viable option for a patrol rifle or a duty gun or a home defense gun. But first, let's do the 30 second breakdown right in the beginning. I know you all like this uh, and give you basically the answer right from the beginning. You don't have to watch the rest of the video if you don't want to, but if you do, you can find out exactly why I say what I'm about to say. And it does help out with the YouTube algorithm, which is a huge help. So I'd appreciate it if you did, but if you don't, that is the goal of this beginning part, just to tell you the truth. This flashlight for $34 is a really good value. It is bright enough, it is durable enough. It actually out exceeded all of my expectations and basically every way, except the mount is garbage, they use cheap parts and I really don't like supporting companies that knock off other brands that make really quality stuff and try to undercut them and make a ton of sales. So with all that being said, I'll tell you later in the video if this is something I would actually use myself as a patrol rifle at work, uh, but let's get into the actual video and do the comparison along with the testing. First, let's go over the sponsors of the channel. It's gonna be Brownells, Howitzer, and Tecto Knives. These guys are massive supporters of the channel, allow me to do the content that I do for free for you all. So please show them some love. That's the best thing you guys can do. If you guys like giveaways, check out my Patreon. Uh, there's a link in the description for that. And Brownells, you guys can go to my website. There is a ton of different things there in the links that are gonna help you a lot and you're gonna appreciate that. Uh, it does help with the channel as well. So check out my website if you're looking for some uh, cool stuff. Trying to move the sponsors, everything around for you guys. I hear the comments, so I'm trying to make this a little more streamlined and I'm trying to make the ads kind of incorporated into the video. So please in the comments, let me know what you think about the new way I'm kind of incorporating the ads into the videos. But with all that being said, let's get right into the video and we'll go over this stuff a little bit later. Now let's take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison of these lights and see where they differ and if they differ a ton. So one of these is a real Surefire. The other one is an Amazon knockoff. One is a couple hundred dollars. The other one was like sub $40. And if I'm being completely honest with you, at first glance, these look strikingly similar. There's a couple differences that I noticed right off the bat. One of the biggest being is the lens was smaller. And for somebody that has never really handled one of these lights and just got one of these for the first time, it might really not know the difference. Weight wise, this one feels just a touch heavier, but it's probably because the battery is just a little bit bigger in this one. So that's probably really the only reason that's a little bit heavier. The buttons. You can definitely hear and feel a slight difference, but not as much as you would think. This one feels a lot better than I would think for being so cheap. And what's actually really cool is I've got some other parts here this is the Amazon tape switch, and this is a real Surefire tape switch. So I'm gonna take these off here. So this is the real Surefire. And I have the Amazon tape switch, and that works. Take off the Amazon, and we'll put on the real. So here's another Surefire, and this one is almost identical in size with this one. So this is definitely what this light is mirroring. What they basically ripped off was this one here. So I just found out that the head screws in half apparently. That's a sweet feature. Um, but this is, I guess, is a good time to take a look at the internals of this light. So I did not mean to do this. I was just trying to unscrew the actual light itself and this came undone so we'll throw that back on so you can swap the tail caps now let's check with the heads and see if you can swap those
Now let's compare the heads themselves. So as you can tell, like I said, the lens is a little bit smaller on that one. That was one thing that gave it away pretty quickly for me. But honestly, it isn't much different. These things are really, really close. What you're really gonna notice is here, the internal parts are obviously gonna be the biggest difference, and you're gonna be able to visibly see that when you take this apart. Same goes for the back. Everything on the outside looks very, very similar. A couple small differences they might have missed or maybe Surefire revamped and updated that they didn't change. But where you really start to tell is when you break these down and you look internally. You can see where one is made with cheap parts and the other one has a little bit more expensive parts. So we got a handful of tape switches and if these were all in a bin and I was just grabbing them, I might not be able to tell the difference. Obviously, you can see here that the authentic ones say Surefire, the Amazon one does not, but just first glance at these, they look very similar. So let's take two of these and just compare side by side. You get the branding, this one does not. But looks and feel, this one's responsive all the way through. This one's responsive all the way through. So now comes the fun part. We're gonna take this, we're gonna mount it to a rifle, and we are going to go test it. So I'm gonna set this one off to the side, set this new gun up that I just finished, and we are gonna put it on this rifle, and we are going to test it out out of the range. We're gonna do some practical testing. I'm not gonna be able to eat this against a tree because uh, I don't think that's super practical, but we'll do some practical testing, shoot some rounds with it, uh, maybe do some light durability testing to it and see if it causes any kind of issues with the light. So throw this on here, up front. Tighten it down, and then we'll have to use the sticky stuff that came with it and put it there up top. No, okay. Well, those are garbage. But don't worry, I've got a fix for this. Use some goon tape here. I use this stuff probably more than I should. works. We got our gun set up with the light, so we'll run out and do some practical testing with it. We're down here at the range and we're going to be testing the light itself here with normal use and it's raining out which is kind of perfect because I want to do some light durability testing especially with uh, moisture and seeing how well it is able to keep out the rain or any kind of water that gets to it. Uh, so we're going to kind of do a dual purpose test here. I'm going to leave the camera on. I'm going to hold the light in the on position. I'm just going to start shooting. I'm going to run a whole mag and see if any of the recoil or any of the rain or moisture or anything gets to it and causes it to turn off. Uh, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video. This is Arrowhead Tactical. These are the pants I'm wearing. I'm sure you absolutely love the get up I got going on with these muck boots. Uh, we got a bunch of flooding here. Had really bad weather these last couple days, but I had to get out here and do this testing. Uh, but these guys are concealed carry pants. Absolutely love these guys because they're sweats, shorts, different apparel as well, and they're comfortable. And what's really cool, these have an inner belt on them to allow you to be able to conceal carry comfortably in sweatpants, but not have your pants sagging or pulling up whenever you go to draw. Everything is exactly where it's supposed to be which is really nice but big thank you to them there's a link in the description if you guys are interested in picking up some for yourself but let's get right into the testing here and see how well this light works Now we're just going to do some very light durability stuff. Uh, we're just going to tap it here with a mag. Uh, not that crazy, I'm not going to be smashing into it, but I just want to see if some shocks will cause any issues. So you can see with the mount. The mount is loosening. Again, very light, nothing, nothing excessive. I'm not just pounding into it. Have 
So now that you've watched the comparison and the testing, uh, you're probably just as impressed as I am. This thing handled all those things a lot better than I thought it would. And now I can do a much dur more durable testing if you would like to see me do that, like drops and hits and more strikes. Uh, me personally, I didn't really think I had to do that because this is something that I wanted to see more practical, what I would actually use my rifle. Um, I did not compare it, like test these side by side because I've used Surefire lights for years. I beat the crap out of them and they are crazy durable and I've never had any issues with any of my Surefire lights. I probably have 10 of them. If you include handgun lights, then, then probably 20. But long story short, I've used Surefire product for a long time and they've always been incredibly durable so with this light this thing actually was really impressive with the water test that was the one that i really thought was going to get this i thought it would would short out i didn't think it was gonna be watertight i figured with the light rain it would be okay and i figured under recoil we might have some hiccups but when i dunked it in water and it continued to work and now it still works after all of that this is a couple days after those tests I'm actually pretty shocked. So really impressed with the durability of this and uh, the tape switch itself, I did have some problems with that and that's gonna kind of make me a little leery with this setup. So when I first got this, I was messing around with the tape switch, just clicking it to see if the connection was good and if it would turn on on every place I clicked it. And uh, I would click, I clicked it probably about 100 times, I didn't count, but you know, around 100, 150 times. And every once in a while I would press and it wouldn't work, which is not the worst thing in the world. Um, but what was the worst thing in the world was out of those 100, 150, I had about 20 to 25 of those that I pressed simultaneously and that just didn't work at all. I thought maybe it was like a bad connection. I tightened everything. It still, nothing was a problem. It just didn't work for like 20 to 30 presses. And then randomly it started working again and it hasn't had really any hiccups since like that. Uh, so really right off the rip made me a little skeptical with this and maybe the tape switch isn't the best. Maybe that's really, really cheap out. I don't know. The tick clicky tail cap as well as in the back and that one didn't have any problems from the testing that I did, but I did the majority of my testing with this setup. In the B-roll here, I'm gonna be showing you guys some of the light output at night because that is a really important thing about these uh, brightness with this. It is bright enough is what I will say. It is bright enough to basically do really anything I needed with a normal rifle. Home defense, anything indoors, you're gonna have plenty of light. Uh, anything outdoors, you're obviously gonna be able to see a good distance, not, not incredibly far. The real Surefire definitely is brighter. This one has more of a, a yellow hue, the Surefire. This one has a little bit more of a, a white or blue hue. So that's gonna be a personal preference. I really don't care either way, but that's gonna come down to the end user of what he or she prefers. Uh, but the brightness, this one is not as bright as the Surefire, but I will say it is bright enough for most things that you're gonna do. But if you're looking for the brightest possible, then this isn't gonna be the one for you. So let's just go right into some pros. Uh, the biggest one obviously is gonna be the price. $34 is ridiculously cheap for a flashlight that had this much durability uh, and the brightness of it. So I was very satisfied with it. It came with a tape switch as well. So you didn't have to like buy the light and then buy the tape switch for another $10, $20 and add the price a little bit more, which who really cares even if it's sub $50. Uh, but for $34, you got a clicky tail cap and an actual tape switch on here with a solid light. So for the price, you're getting a lot of value. The cons that come along with this is the fact that I don't love supporting companies that knock off real companies that put a lot of work and money and have been proven to work. I just don't love supporting it. It's like, I hate giving money to them. I'd rather spend the extra money and give it to uh, Surefire, the, the name brand that actually made the product. They put all the work into designing and everything. These guys basically just went to SHOT Show and ripped it off. So don't love that. The mount on this is absolute garbage. I have to tighten it multiple times down at the range. What I will say is you were able just to take the mount off and run any of your normal uh, mounts that you would run for your other Surefires because it's all the same I and mean, it's identical. So you can get a quality mount that's gonna be more expensive than your light uh, and it will most likely be much better if you decided to do that. So if you were like, no, I actually wanna use this, but uh, I would junk the mount because I don't think it's good at all. And then the last con is gonna be the fact that you saw the side-by-side -side comparison. The interior parts on this are cheap. Uh, it's $34, the parts are obviously gonna be cheaper and you can see it from the side by side. The parts are definitely cheaper. So that is a con that they're gonna wear out quicker. You're gonna have problems quicker. If there is gonna be a problem with, with moisture and everything, it's gonna cause these prop parts to break faster. Uh, so that is a downside. But for $34 and the durability that I had, you know, it's kind of up to you. You could buy like six of these before you'd ever have to buy another one of these. With all that being said, is this something I would personally recommend and use for a patrol rifle at work 
or for home defense? The quick and simple answer is no, I would not. Uh, there are better options out there, hence these. There's a reason I have a cloud defensive rain on my patrol rifle. It's because I saw them hammer nails in with it. Uh, they froze them in a block. They did pressure testing on them, a ridiculous amount of testing on those lights, and I have never had any issues with any of the rains I've had. It le stays out in my uh, work truck all day and night. I live in Ohio, so it's zero degrees one day and it's 80 degrees the next day. Uh, and it, it never has any problems. That light has been phenomenal and I trust my life with it. But this light, as it works really well and the durability was good and it basically passed all the tests that I wanted to see it pass, uh, I think this light is great for a secondary gun. This is a gun that is in my vault room that uh, if something were to happen and I ran to grab a gun, this would not be the first one I grabbed. So this is a gun that I set up that I really like to have lights on all my guns that if I were ever use it, you know, I had a light, but this is not gonna be a, a first, a second, a third, a fourth, even a fifth uh, option for me. This is just a gun in the safe. So if you're looking for like a plinking gun or like an extra gun that you just wanna light on, then this would be a really good option. And there is a link in the description to Amazon if you guys are interested because I will be asked that question. Um, there is a link down in the description to Amazon directly for this light if you guys are interested in picking one up for your plinking gun, but I just do not recommend putting this on a gun that you're going to trust your life with as a primary source. Some of you might hate me for that, but that's okay. Me personally, I'd rather spend a little bit more money with a product that I 100% trust and know is going to work every time than a product that in a short period of time, I did have some issues, but it was durable enough and definitely exceeded my expectations. So let's go over to the sponsors of the channel, Brown Owls, Howitzer, Tecto Knives. Tecto Knives is a knife company I've been using personally and professionally. Really like their knives. They've been a big fan of their knives, been using them a lot. I love their spring assisted and auto knives. They have a ton of power to them. I love the A5 Spry, that's my favorite, and the Badger is just a small little guy and it's a really, really cool knife, uh, but check them out. I'm working on getting a discount code for you guys, but all that will be on my website if you're interested in taking a look. Brown Owls use code TA10 to save 10% off orders of $150 or more, and you can get basically anything there and then how is our donates 5% of proceeds to charity and they have a tactical advisor shirt, which is really, really cool. Other than that, thank you all. I appreciate you so much.